All right, coming up next, a matchup to determine the baddest man on the planet. The UFC heavyweight title is on the line. Well, for a long time, he's been mentioned with the baddest man on the planet. For a long time, though, the title fight eluded him. Not anymore. Here he is, the number one heavyweight contender, finally making this walk and cracking a smile. He's waited a long time for this. He's not expecting a 25-minute war. He believes he has the power and the skills to get this thing done quickly. I guess we'll find out. So here he is making his way to the Octagon for another heavyweight title defense. This has been the baddest man on the planet now for several years, and he has taken on all comers more often than not, leaving them twitching on the canvas. Knockout power for days. The question is tonight, with a challenge like this, can he walk out the way he came in as the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world? you are tail of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. More than a decade separates these two fighters when it comes to the age, with big differences in height and reach. We send it inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out Madison Square Garden Arena in New York City. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet six inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting out of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, presenting the challenger, Monster. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a grappler, hitting a professional record of 29 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of the Republic of Dagestan, Russia, ladies and gentlemen, presenting a reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Habib the Eagle. So here we go, round one of this highly anticipated tilt between the strong striker and the decorated grappler. Any chance that these guys mix it up, or are you just expecting them to stick to a guy into the dance? I'm expecting a pretty straightforward approach from both of these fighters. The striker will try to lead with his punches and his kicks, and the grappler will try to time a takedown, time a clinch position so he can start to work towards a lot of those great judo throws that he possesses. Once on the ground, he is in his realm and will start to chase submissions. Right hand punch for the clinch. Oh. Quick entry here. Nice single leg entry. Rotates ahead outside to a high ground. Oh. Oh. Takes it from behind. What a fantastic takedown. A lot of top pressure. 
pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Now he's able to isolate that left arm. Look for him to step over the top of the head to lift his opponent onto his hip to chase his finish. Submission defense there. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine, but the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke or flatten him out and just go for the finish. Oh, nice job to reverse him. Oh, pretty good entry there, and he gets the fight to his wheelhouse on the ground. Beautiful takedown into the full guard. Look for him to posture and use ground and pound to open up submission opportunities. Back mount now. Nurmagomedov's back in full mount. Under three minutes now to go in the round. Trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. Attack an arm bar. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Now he falls back into the finishing position. to watch. Down into his mouth. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Oh, nice land there with the punch. You see, he's taking advantage of what is an obvious edge of reach. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this? Got the single collar tie. Down. There you go. Oh, how about the slam there? That one cannot feel good. Now he's going to try to attack the more here. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. All right, close guard now. You gotta be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Oh, nice job to get back up again. You don't wanna hang out on the ground with this guy. 30 seconds now to go on the round. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. I love it, crap, it could really be entertaining. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the block. Oh, looks like he's trying to isolate and maybe set up a Kimura here, DC. Yeah, he's gonna try to attack Kimura here. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. Okay, round two, you ready? You ready? Let's go. Big ball for Now we get back to range. Oh, nice 
nice land there by Nurmagomedov. When he made his UFC debut in 2012, he wasn't striking like that. No, he did not look like this. That's a credit to his coaches, not only at the American Kickboxing Academy, but at Eagles MMA over in Dexter. Oh, really using his reach advantage as he landed the jab there. Oh, nice slip, and then the counter for him there. And Let's see if he can capitalize and lock up a sub. You gotta try to find whether or not you're gonna land. Ground and pound here or if you're gonna go to a submission. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Oh! He's gonna turn on the elbow and he's gonna chase the submission finish. Side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you looking to do? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grabs everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Good entry there to take the fight to the grappling realm. Now we'll see what he can do from here, champ. This is exactly where he wants to be. Look for him to try to use ground and pound to open up submission opportunities. Connects with the right hand. Pretty good punch, that one. Nice right punch by this young man. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. All right, dominant position for him here, full mount. If you're the bottom fighter, better start moving those hips, DC. Oh, you gotta start moving those hips. What you should do initially, right, is start to push at the knees. Oh, another takedown secured by Nermago Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do. He's gonna start looking to land big shots from the top. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip it. Right now, it looks like he may trying to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has, it's in there deep, there you go. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestling stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, like the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control, because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use your... Well, he's got the longer reach, and he certainly showed it there in landing that straight punch. All right, single collar tie now. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. All right, he'll engage in a single corner tie. Oh, now going to the judo throw, and he ends up in side control. A lot of options for him here. Yeah, he can either go ground and pump, or he can chase submission. Now he'll try to start attacking a rear naked choke from the top position. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. His opponent's got double hooks in now under the chin. It's starting to get deep. Yeah, notice he just took the body triangle, readjusted the lock, and now it looks like he's got it. Full guard here, DC, what does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn lead. Inside control, you got a ton of options. He goes knees on belly. All right, side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Ten minutes in the books. So that's the end of the round. Pretty significant.
significant damage done in that round. Cut on the cheek, sustained there from that strike. Now the cut man's got to get in there and close that thing up. Better to be below the eye than above it, sure. But nonetheless, this could be a factor now moving forward. All right, so there's the horn at the end of the round. Multiple takedowns landed for him over the previous five minutes. And you know what, John? Even more importantly, look at the opponent now. He's afraid to pull the trigger because he's been taken down so many times. Getting taken down is one thing, but getting it, having it happen to you continuously really does make you gun shy. And right now, he's very tentative to let his offense go because of the fear of getting taken down back to the match. Well, just as he did the previous round, he continues to connect on a high volume of strikes. And a good sign, too, doesn't seem to be slowing down whatsoever. All right, so a high amplitude double leg takedown there. Now we'll see what he can do with it to try to advance position on the ground. You knew that he was going to attack the double because he's such an explosive guy. He got it on the hip, finished the shot very quickly. Fantastic job. Well, you got to be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Now looking to do something with that left arm. He's isolating the Kimura attack. Notice he'll pick up his left leg, step over the head to get his opponent on his hip. Once he gets him on his side, he'll start to apply pressure to try to get the finish. Submission beautifully executed there on the ground. Right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So what a moment for the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world getting it done tonight and with style points as he submits his opponent to win the UFC title. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliata has called a stop to this contest at one minute of the third round. Declaring the winner by tap out due to an arm bar. And still, the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Habib the Eagle, And still the baddest man on the planet. I know you haven't retired yet, but uh, I don't necessarily want to see you share the octagon with Atmos. I mean, this dude is a savage. There is prestige in being called the UFC heavyweight champion.